can you there we go I had my mic muted that was the problem all right let me adjust this real quick okay cool I had it actually muted on my headset anyways for those that are here welcome nice to see you all again we can wait for people to fill in um, for those that may be interested I'm signing into discord right now I started a discord channel just for this really not for like chatting all the time per se but um, like for example I posted in there if we wanted to do like a critique session I was trying to get if anyone wanted to um, upload their stuff to the public Dropbox folder we could set that up and I could do feedback tonight in ZBrush as well if we wanted so stuff like that we can do on Discord, like prep for those types of things. Um, one sec, I'm signing into Discord. It's telling me to select the images with a bicycle. Ah, oh, man, these bot things. Gotta focus, gotta focus. Oh, and now it tells me my password's wrong, of course. I'm not a robot. They always tell you your password password is wrong after you do all the images uh, bus how are all of you doing oh it claims I oh, I see oh. what was my discord signed up to I haven't signed in on this computer I realized I guess I don't have to do that right now let's see if anyone's posted but yeah so if you guys join the discord which I was trying to sign on just to give you guys the link the upcoming streams we can um, prep a little bit with let's see it is hotmail hmm. anyways we can get going on the sculpts if anything Last try here on the sign in as a robot. Skip traffic lights. Verify. Oh, goodness. All right. Oh, well. Anyways, how's everybody doing tonight? If you hit me up on Discord later, I can post the link to this um, and I'll get it to you guys. I'll just have to figure out how to do it. Um, later when more people join anyways we're still on nightcrawler uh, my plan basically is to just go to town on the sculpt itself I haven't really touched it since we stopped so I've been doing the whole thing during this live so my thought tonight is we could just go to town on the actual sculpt itself do a lot of the anatomy get in a good pretty good spot um, and so forth um, but yeah I've done it all on the stream didn't really work on it off the stream as I just haven't really had time and uh, so that's my thought um, if you guys have questions or anything let me know and also if any of you guys want um, I'm up for doing I just got to set up the public Dropbox folder either I, I have one I can share um, if someone wants to volunteer we could do like a critique tonight I, I often when I taught would do we'd open up someone's sculpt and look at it and it was you know helpful for everyone um, which was cool so if any of you want to do that we could do that as well since we only got a couple people on Discord, we didn't really get that going this week. But that could be totally cool. Except, ah, Discord. I got Discord on my phone up and running at least. So, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. You guys can hear me, right? Just making sure. And also, if you are, you know, actually, if any of you are typing, I was told that our Facebook... Um, chat isn't working per se in this restream map where it usually collects all of it so if you want to chat um, it'll be much easier if you join on YouTube or something um, as that will come through the restream if you're just watching it's probably fine uh, to get on just uh, here and watch but if you're on Facebook and want to chat I recommend go on YouTube otherwise I'm, I'm checking it right now but otherwise you'll have to uh, Yes, yeah, see, I've noticed one of you have said hello, 
which is cool. I didn't see that. So I'd say join YouTube if you can. Otherwise, I'll check in on Facebook now and then. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Let's get our reference images open. This is where we left off. All right, cool. You guys can hear. Good. I finally installed 2019, 2019 today at work. I should be able to do it today um, or do it now here on, on my laptop, but uh, I haven't yet. But now I can update finally, which is nice. So next stream, I'll have the latest with the full uh, pump for folders and everything. So that's going to be awesome. All right, so let's get some of this reference together and start doing this guy. How did everyone enjoy E3? Did anybody go actually go to E3? Be curious what you guys thought of the the games. If you had game of show type stuff, I am pumped personally for um, as you guys know if you've joined in previous streams from software, I'm a huge fan of. So I was excited to see their announcement. Um, for their new game they're doing with the, I can't think of the guy off the top of my head, the writer from Game of Thrones. So another fantasy game with them is going to be awesome. I just love uh, From Software games, so I'm pretty excited for that. What else was good? I'm really looking forward to um, uh, the Zelda remake of the Game Boy game. That's going to be awesome. All right, setting up my ref. I should have got pure ref running on here. It's all good. At least this way you guys can see the reference I'm using. All right. So yeah, we kind of have them like this. Last week we talked and like we thought maybe like he, he was posed too much on his feet and not enough of looking like he's actively like in the images. It almost looks like he could jump at any point. Whereas, like, I have it more relaxed. Um, I'm not sure if I want to change that right now or if I'm just going to start sculpting. Hmm. If I want to put him up on his toes. That's going to take some adjusting for sure. I might... Um, the nice thing about this, if you guys block them in like this, if I took this into Maya, um, I could set up like parents really easily, and I can pose it. If I, if I could get this to, if I could figure out how to get OBS to actually render <laughs> Maya out for me, I could show you guys in that. But if you set up like simple parents on all these parts, we can like really pose it easily and quickly. It's really nice. Uh, you don't have to learn. You you don't need to learn Maya to do ZBrush, at all. Actually, you can, depending on what you're doing in ZBrush, you you don't really need Maya at all. Maya is really good for like, for example, since I work in um, games, um, we need Maya for a lot of things, um, but. I oftentimes will go, like say I'm starting a new character, I'll oftentimes just start in ZBrush. I'm, I'll probably have like a reference point of something, but uh, like from our game for scale, but I'll just take a sphere and start blocking out a character. But inevitably, if you want to make a game asset, um, ZBrush isn't really made for the full pipe. You technically could do everything in it without Maya in terms of making a model. You technically could. But, yeah, it's not really the point of ZBrush in my mind. All right, got to turn samples off. All right, so we're just going to sculpt. And we're going to see where we get tonight. My goal would be we have a good rough pass of the entire body. And it feels pretty solid. So for pure topology... Um, ZBrush has some good features for topology, you know, but if you want to do like, in my opinion, like stuff like Maya um, is better for it in terms of doing topology. If you want like a game mesh, you could probably make one in ZBrush too, but um, 
it yeah it's just not, again like they have topo tools that are awesome but um you know not i i'm a big fan of like really solid game mesh assets and um z what's great about zbrush is um you can do a lot really fast and sorry not you can do a lot really fast but you can get some really solid um topology for like remeshing things for if, if you're prototyping or need something quick or maybe you don't even care how much geometry is there and you don't want to spend your time on topology then stuff like zero mesher can be really good I have holes in this mesh I've noticed but if you want to do a game mesh that's really optimal then there's other tools that are typically better I'm saying do you recommend purchasing Keyshot for beginners um no now, saying that, if you have the means and you can afford Keyshot, it, it does make for really nice renders. I mean, it's really easy. Would I recommend it? I don't know if I'd recommend it, but I love it. I really like Keyshot. Um, so, it's great for like rendering portfolio pieces. But there's options out there. Like, if you already have Maya, you can use Arnold Render. There's all sorts of stuff. All right, guys, I'm kind of fumbling here with my thoughts as I'm chatting. Um, let me think this through real quick before so I can just start sculpting here. Do I want to adjust the pose? Mm. Mm. I just don't feel like I feel like posing right now. I kind of want to just sculpt. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> What do you guys think? I'm trying to decide if I should actually put him more up on his toes. I think we're just going to sculpt for a bit, at least down through. I'm going to probably keep this lower body separate for a bit, like the legs, and combine this torso and these arms. This is how I think we're going to do it. Actually, I'm probably going to keep the arms separate. Actually, no, I'm going to combine them at first because we can sculpt the whole anatomy and then we can separate it, I think would make more sense. Hmm. How much do I do it in ZBrush? All right, here, hold on. Let me mentally commit to some stuff here real quick. I'm going to separate out these legs. I got to mentally plan here. All right, I'm going to separate out the legs and the tail. And then I'm going to get all this combined and the head. I'm not going to have the head in this either. This is what I'm going to sculpt on. Ah, oh, see, Comics Legend, if I had the 2019, I could do what you're saying. I could probably actually set up groups the way I would do it in Maya. Um, That'd be good. Dang, I'm gonna have 2019 next time because I can now, um, actually, let me check on my computer real quick. We have this thing where I can update through work and yep, okay, cool. So next time I should be able to update 2019. I have it actually ready to roll. Awesome. I just haven't had it yet. But yeah, if you parent stuff and use folders, then that's definitely the way to go. <clears throat> So let's do this. We're just going to sculpt some torsos. I can easily pose the torso and arms after the fact and sculpt fix it if I need to. Um, you're saying, how much of the process of creating character do you do in ZBrush? I do a lot of the sculpting in ZBrush. And a lot of proportion and block out, like how you see him right now. Um, I do a lot of that in ZBrush. All right, here we go. And then obviously all the detailing and, and whatnot is done in ZBrush. All right, I don't know why I'm hesitant. I think I'm kind of hungry is why. All right, here we go. Let's Dynamesh this and go. I like to say, what's the worst thing that happens? I have to do it over again. It's not that big of a deal. All right. Initially here, I'm going to um, just
just kind of free sculpt this, I think. I'm not going to get too caught up in reference personally. Now, saying that, it's good for you to have lots of good reference always. I prefer hard surface and other things like Max or Maya. Saying that though, some people are amazing at um, hard surface in ZBrush. It like, actually really blows my mind when they do it. <laughs> so it depends. I find it easier for me to do hard surface though in um, one of those programs, for sure. So here I'm just getting the scapula kind of set up. I have a decent understanding of anatomy, not to where I don't need to look at stuff ever. So I'll probably take this to a point here. I'm pretty comfortable with just the figure, but some of these poses, like certain things will start to happen that it's hard for me to um, know exactly and I might have to get like specific ref for so. But the main thing is, is us establishing all our bony landmarks and trying to make sure those feel correct. And so in this case, you're going to have the scapula and then we'll have muscles pulling forward for sure. Is there any post-processing in ZBrush when using the 3D printer? What do you mean? Is there a post process when using 3D printer? Yeah, it's, ZBrush is very capable of hard surface. I just personally am not great at it. But people do stuff that I'm just always impressed by. And there's a lot of modeling tools now and a lot of Boolean tools and really cool features that it's like a different way to approach doing hard surface that I just need to take time. And maybe I should do that sometime on stream and just take time and learn how to do it. Um, there's a lot of good tools in ZBrush for that. For sure. I should time lapse this. Let's record it. Full medium. Yeah, ZModeler is pretty... Um, pretty nice for that stuff. And if you're new to 3D and like ZBrush, then like you don't have any preconceived ideas of how stuff works as much as say like maybe me. Like I'm like kind of a creature of old habits, you know, a lot of people get like that. And um, and so I just kind of have my ways I do stuff and there's a lot better ways to do some of these things now. The old tablet question, what type of tablet? Honestly, like whatever you can afford and get your hands on. There's some of those new ones, I forget what they're called, that are much more affordable. Um, if you have the ability to get a used one, that's fine. I have a Wacom tablet. I've always used a Wacom tablet. A little pricier, you know. They're great. Um, but really, just get one that functions and that you can price out. Um, and then get to a point where you know, you, you've learned a lot, and if you feel then that the tablet is like a pain for you and you need a better one, then you can invest in that even more so at that point. But yeah, looking for like a used Wacom tablet could be a way to go, or buy a new one if you can afford that. Um, but there, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. Just don't get one that's so piece of junk that <laughs> it doesn't work well. That'd be my only... I don't know what that would be, but, you know... Yeah, I just have a Wacom tablet. Is there anyone watching that might uh, have a demo for a different type? I could always try it, but yeah, this is just the my Intuos Pro. This is a couple years old. I always love Wacom; they're nice. So. In Korea, it's hard to learn ZBrush for sculpting properly. Why is that? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? 
I have medium. Large is really big. I like medium because I can like take it easily. It doesn't take up my whole desks. Um, yeah, and then like James has small. It's fine. I started with a smaller one, I think, when I just started all this, and um, it was fine. Honestly, like the main thing you got to get good at with sculpting is just fundamentals before anything, right? Um, that's the most important thing. So I'm always trying to remember when I do the stream how to drag up this menu here. Guess where is it? Alt? Alt drag? No? Control drag? I thought it was control drag. What is it, guys, to drag this menu here? Since I'm on a laptop. Transfer. So I love Cintiq. I just don't have I don't have as much space at my home to do Cintiq. So I work on a laptop. And I, I honestly I love the Cintiq. It's awesome. Um, yeah. Hey, welcome, Skulldroge. Saying, how does the interface on the Intuos work? By that mean, how do you know when your pen is where it is and put on the tablet? Um, yeah, you just get used to that. Um, it's not anything crazy. I still can't figure out how to drag this. I'm trying to figure out how to drag this menu up and down. I thought, oh, there it is, Control. Ah, yes. All right. I was trying to do solo. All right, here we go. Yeah, we're doing um, Nightcrawler for those that are... Oh, no, did I merge the swords in? Oh, my goodness. That's funny. <laughs> okay, well, let's separate these. I did not mean to to do that. Again, like I said earlier, the worst case we remake it. Those weren't those are just placeholder swords anyways. Not a big deal. Let's dynamesh close up those holes. Or actually we can just do close holes. Do we have to dynamesh? Where are my close holes? Modify topology. Where's close holes? There we are. And for all of you, you should be able to see chat. Um, sometimes it comes in through multiple ch channels. Um, you should be able to see it on the stream in one spot. And again, if you're on Facebook, make sure to join YouTube or Twitch, one of the other channels if you want to chat, because the Facebook chat is not coming in um, on stream. So if you're wondering if I haven't responded to you, that's why. Because I can't see it. Any tablet should map to your monitor. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys haven't used tablets before, they basically, it's, um, imagine this is like your monitor, right? Right, this. And so when my pen is here, you know, it follows it. And then you click on the screen. It's one of those things that at first is kind of weird, and then you quickly, you really quickly get used to it. Quickly. And it's great. And especially if um, you use a mouse a lot at your desk, like switching like to Maya and other things like this for, um, instead of using a mouse can be really nice because the clicking motion's slightly different to where the, you know, the carpet t tunnel type of s symptoms aren't as, it's not as bad on your, your finger for clicking. And so I try to use it in my, uh, and other things as well. All right, let's get this going. Let me see here. I could easily find a reference for this pose. but I'm going to wing it. <laughs> oh, nice. Old school. I'm not that old school. <laughs> That's awesome. 
I do remember first coming across the Wacom tablet um, when I got my internship when I was young. Before that, I was just, I wasn't sculpting really yet. I was just modeling, right? And so I uh, was just using a mouse. And um, I, this guy, when I got to my internship, had a Wacom tablet. And I was like, what is this magic? Like, what am I looking at? And um, even then, I wasn't using ZBrush back then, but they were just showing me how they used the Amaya and everything. And I was like, oh, man, this looks great. And so I picked one up, took me a little bit used to, but quickly I really enjoyed it, even over a mouse. It's good. So if you guys weren't here on the previous streams, we basically blocked in the torso, the, the body and pose last stream, all this, um, and try to get the proportions and other things in place so that today we could do this, this part, and start sculpting. So there's a couple of muscle groups for you that might wonder. You have, you have your scapula or your clavicle sorry it goes like this back to like right here and then you have your shoulder muscles connect to this one up here and you have a chest muscle that comes across and connects here then we got another set that comes like this and then like this and so we'll sculpt it all It says your link is broken on your profile link on the PixLogic panels. My link to what? Can you link me? Can you link me to the link or the place you're talking about? And I can see what this is. All right. So part of the problem I have right here on this arm. Here, let's get the neck. You guys stay with me. Sometimes it, I'm not as pro at sculpting all this live. So I'll do my best. I have music on in my headphones right now, and I have some guy talking about the universe or something. And it's really distracting. I don't know what's about to play. I gotta change this. It's called Dark 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 by Gregory. Oh wait, no, 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 it's not. It's called Vapor meditation by the liturgists. And oh man, gotta pass this one. Oh, you just want to see my work. Oh, okay, so our link's loud. Um, maybe <laughs> I don't think we should be um, just spamming links, but if there's something we ask for, something I don't mind. The name in the schedule below on the Twitch Pixelogic page goes to an empty page on the Pixelogic site. Ah, uh, well, if Kyle, you're here, one of you guys, maybe you could look at it. Um, if you want to see my stuff, you can go to ArtStation or my website, Katen. It's very fancy, KatenCalloway.com. Or you can see, like, Instagram, Art of Katen, or ArtStation. I do have the benefit of, I think I'm one of the only Katens. So if you just search Katen Calloway, like ArtStation or Instagram or something, I have a bunch of stuff out there. Can do it that way. Oh yeah, it is. Ha! I forget on my overlay it right there. Look at that. Down below, Art of Katen on Instagram or katenkelly.com. You can also, um, like I said, Art Station. I could put the little Art Station down here too, but you guys can't actually click on this stuff, so. You guys like my LAFC hat? It's our team here in LA for you soccer fans. I'm always talking soccer here as I love it. So you guys didn't tell me earlier, maybe some of you just showed up now, but um, E3, so I haven't been on since E3. What were some of you guys' favorites showings? Mine were the new From Software game and Zelda, the new Zelda, re the remake of um, the Game Boy Zelda, Pumped. I'm going to play that with my son. 
what's going on with this arm? Let me see. And then, hmm. I'm trying to think of what else I saw that I was like, that looks cool. I think with the arm, you got to make sure it feels like it's going up under the shoulder or else it's going to feel off. Way to the woods. I'll have to check that out. I don't, I'm not sure if I saw it. I'm going to have to look at that. Yes, I worked on um, God of War 3 and God of War Ascension. And then I worked on um, a canceled title at Sony, which they actually talk about. If you guys checked out the um, documentary that Sony Santa Monica put out, they actually talk a little bit about the canceled project from what I've heard. I haven't actually watched it myself. And then I was briefly on the new God of War before I left. So my time at Sony was really fun. I definitely liked working on God of War. So it says, uh, it's not too bad. I remember going to, um, all right, so something real quick before I go. I got to plot out something here. So we have our tricep or our forearm muscles are going to come up. You're going to connect right here. And you get down the middle. I'm just trying to plot this out real quick. This is where our our muscles are going to come across like this. Have some go down there. Right around here is where a bunch of stuff is going to connect. Like so. And why I'm doing this is I'm trying to help myself know where this is feeling funny. So like the biceps feeling funny. I'm trying to figure it out. I'll definitely look at a way to the woods. Sounds good. So yeah, I'm trying to plot out this a little bit because what's feeling funny right now is this bicep shoulder area because I just dynamished it together. I probably, if I didn't just pick it back up from two weeks ago, I probably would have been a little more in tune with some stuff to fix and not let that be as in a funky of a position. But what you got to make sure is that it feels like the bicep is going, because you know your bicep connects up under your, your shoulder um, so you got to make sure it feels like it's going under there and sometimes it requires a bit of a force to get the mesh to go under here and sometimes you have to kind of plot out some things a little bit to sort it so for example you know the shoulder muscle is going to come and connect there just trying to sort this out. So when I started at Sony, I'll, I'll never forget the feeling of walking in there <laughs> when I first, my first days and like, cause I'm a huge Sony fanboy. And the Sony like SCEA logo is like at the entrance. That was, that'll always be a cool memory for me. Now they have really nice office, new office. That's like, has more of like a, cool entrance with statues and stuff so it's even cooler than it used to be yeah this this arm right here is filling all sorts of whack actually i should have sorted this before i combined it honestly but it's okay got this part of it also is um Okay, let me think. Oftentimes, your arms are the best reference. The Cyberpunk game looks pretty cool, but I don't know. I, 
I'm not sure if I've played or not. I prob probably will check it out, I guess. I still haven't played The Witcher, actually. And I should. He has pretty thick arms, actually, in this concept. And the triceps are... They actually kind of pull him pretty far forward. So it's important to know where this landmark is right here. Um, just because it's a squared up spot. Where a lot of stuff connects on the shoulder. Like there's this middle deltoid here that a lot of it pulls from. Like that. And then this front deltoid is kind of like this. And then you have a little gap here, usually, that pushes in because there literally is a muscle gap. Which, uh, you said, I heard they weren't showing much gameplay and mostly cherry because they don't want people to get upset when the final version of the game comes out. Are you talking about um, cyber Cyberpunk? Oh, you know what else looked really cool was the Final Fantasy VII remake. They, every time they show more and more of that, it definitely gets me excited. I mean, Final Fantasy VII for me was a pretty influential game for me so I'm excited to play a remake and curious how they'll do it I I still need to play um, they released Final Fantasy 7 on the switch should probably check that out sometime with my son he'd probably like that oh I see uh, most you're just saying games in general yeah. It is crazy how good that game looks compared to Advent Children. Because, I mean, I remember Advent Children, when that came out, I was like, my mind was blown by that, visually by that movie. I don't, I don't even understand what's happening in the movie. I remember getting the Japanese version just to see the visuals. No idea what story was happening. But it was, you know, just cool looking. And... um. And yeah, you're right. Like you see now the remake and it's it looks just as good as the old movie. When it was just a movie. Oh man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Let me look at my ref real quick. I need to import um I got to remind myself real quick the back muscles one second let me find this good ref add to spotlight a uh, please Mess up my spotlight. Yes, please do that. Please mess up my spotlight ZBrush. Um, yeah, the Spirits Within. That visually too is mind-blowing, but Spirits Within to me, like... I don't know, it didn't feel like Final Fantasy. I don't know if you felt that way. I what I liked about Advent Children is it. I mean, obviously, clearly it was based on Final Fantasy VII, but um, it felt like a Final Fantasy thing. The Spirits Within, I was like, what am I? What is this? You know. All right. So what I'm trying to sort out here is if I have a clavicle, which probably could. I mean, sorry, a scapula back here, which probably could use some work as is. We're going to be a little loose about it. And then I have my shoulder muscles pulling. And then you get this like hollow space right here. And actually part of this is like a, 
like a tendon, I guess, that connects to the muscle. Is that tendon or fascia or something? Anyways, really you don't go muscle all the way to your scapula. There's a, a part that kind of flattens out and, and the bulk of, of the muscle is more inside here. It's like you can see a little bit. Oh, let me click here. What I'm talking about. Actually, this got a really good image. Um, this right here, this white stuff on this arm, it bulks up mainly in the fibers. So that's why you'll get these got you'll pull forward. It definitely pulls from here, but it gets a little more flat in those parts. I just can't lose the feeling of this being a, a solid bone, though, the scapula part. So a good way to look at this, too, is if you have top-down ref. Um, actually I actually have a pretty good image. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Uh, where is it? I have a good image of top-down shot. It was actually my brother. I was on a bridge and I was looking down. And we were at the beach and I was like, whoa. And to see the scapula and the clavicle was really cool. Let me see if I can find this image. And it's always been a really nice ref for this. Um, I don't know where I put it. Let me see here. Oh, man. I could use that image right now. Well, how's it misterification? I'm not saying that. I'm glad you found the stream. You can sculpt and hang out. I'm trying to find some reference real quick of this top down shot of the scapula clavicle area for myself. If I can't find it, it's okay. Ah, I don't know where it is. Where is it? Ah, that sucks. Oh, well. Let me see if I have it in this set here. Top down. I don't think I do. I don't. Ah, oh, well. Anyways, the amount of curve that's in your... Your, uh... Scap... Yeah, your... Not your scapula. Your clavicle is crazy. I was going to show it to you guys. So you never played any Final Fantasy? Oh man, they are really good. Some of them, you have to you have to definitely like um, JRPGs though, which I do. I used to love those things, and they just released the Secret of Mana series on the Switch, which is really cool. Also, I love Secret of Mana, and um, never played the other ones which they released with it which is kind of cool yeah I give you tips on muscle groups all day the best uh, at least the best I could try right let's get this next set up the thing with the um, sternocleidomastoid here is you want it to feel like it's coming kind of pulling down to this your little the tip of the the clavicle here and then like some of it will spill off like here off on the sides you have some side muscles right especially for guys if they're flexing or something but all the while you want it to feel still like it's sticking within kind of like this tube you know like when it sticks into the torso it kind of keeps a pretty solid shape you're not going to break like um, this general like cylinder type feel much. And then just make sure these things go in back there behind the ear. And we good to go. Get a little bit of Adam's apple. Oh, 
always be looking at your sculpt from many angles. A lot of times your neck muscles kind of bulge out a little bit. But yeah, if you guys have never um, played Secret of Mana on... I, re I need to figure out how to get browser to work on here because I can show trailers of these things. It would be awesome. Because I don't think it's gonna the browser is going to work for me if I try to load it up. I've tried I tried it last week too and these honestly I think like I always think to myself, oh before the next stream I'm gonna do this thing, right? I'm gonna like prep <laughs> all this stuff. And then I don't know how two weeks flies by so fast. It's crazy. I'm always surprised. Alright, I might move on from this shoulder area for just a little bit. Let myself have a mental break from it and come back and then I'll probably see stuff that's totally busted. And then this, you have this that covers the whole thing. The thing is if we sculpt in like a bunch of nice anatomy here, then when I extract his suit, it'll be perfect. So it'll all be ready to go. Kind of can flatten out on this side a little bit. This can get all big here. This is where you get like a... You often get like the uh, triangle right here. Between right and here. I think it's right here. Pull like this, so you'll feel the these two masses coming together. Your neck muscles in the back, and you start to feel the spine a little bit, especially if they're tilted forward like this. You'll feel a little bit of that. But yeah, I always think I'm going to get all this stuff done before the next stream, and time just like flies by. I feel like I'm making something up right here about this. I don't think I am. Oh, it's up higher. That's where I'm messing up. You get it right here. What am I doing? Look at me. Trying to wing it. I thought that felt weird. Let's see, if you say it confident enough, people will believe you, I guess. All right. I do learn as I go all the time. <laughs> and sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'll do stuff and I think I'm doing it and then I'm like, oh wait, no, that's totally wrong. But I prefer to just keep moving. Now saying that, there definitely is, um, let's get this here. Yeah, that's just funny. All right. All right, here we go. That's funny. Yeah, I think part of me is correct if I'm thinking correctly. But the main triangle you fill out typically is up a little higher. But yeah, technically there is something you feel there. And then the little lats pull across. So this is the interesting thing. These lats like kind of pull over your, assume your back muscles right here. These don't really bulk up a lot. I don't know what they're called, but the ones here that, these little ones, they don't typically get huge. And the lats go up underneath between the, um, bicep and tricep up there and they pull back here and then down connect down below so I'm gonna sort out the uh, hip area next
So anybody working on anything they'd want to share? Could do a critique. Could be fun. Could look at it and give feedback. I've been really wanting to get a 3D printer. Do any of you guys use them much? I uh, I just have not been able to pull myself to pull the trigger on an investment on one. Just so fun. It's like one of those things that I know I'd get and like, oh no, I gotta save. That felt like it was crashing. That would have been bad. I've been wanting a 3D printer for a while, but I still just haven't bought one. Even though it'd be cool. But stuff like this would be so fun to print when complete, you know? Oh yeah, no worries. If you can't, you can't. Not a big deal. I think I need to get that straight here. Any tips on these? We're going to get to it. They are definitely, um, it definitely can be tough. No doubt. And I am going to struggle with them. That's why I have a, a knee ref, if you hadn't noticed already. Because um, once I get to those, I definitely need reference. I mean, the biggest thing I would say is like, even like how I block these in. I block them in with like this upper portion, you know, with the idea, and then there's like the kneecap, and then the lower part, because your uh, knees very much are like you have your big bones on your your uh, was it your tibia and or your ulna. Anyways, you have to be very when you, they get bent like this. You got to make sure like you still have these bony landmarks, and that's all about the knees, especially when they're bent. Um, from the front, like if they're just standing, like that's not too bad. But the key is just making sure that kneecap feels like it's there, the plane, and then where the, the bony landmarks are, like that real boxy shape, and then how the muscles pull into it. So we'll we'll get to this in a in a bit here. Let me just do a pass on this thing. And then we'll be there. Basically, we can try and get a pass on this whole thing here. That'd be good. So, let's think. I know I'm going to need a landmark right here for the leg. And then this is the upper hip area. That comes down. It's where the tailbone is, where that's going to connect. Got back muscles. This guy's probably going to have pretty strong back muscles here. He should feel pretty solid, this guy. So you guys have favorite artists? Like who would you guys say are some of the favorite people you guys look at at this this point that you guys follow for this kind of stuff? I'd be curious. I 
I've been following Antropus on um, Instagram lately because he's been teaching. That guy's been around forever, Chris Chris Costa. I remember seeing his stuff really early on. Sculpting is really amazing. And he's doing these likeness classes now. He does these like crazy awesome likenesses. He just did one of, um, uh, it wasn't Stan Lee. I forget. But if you haven't seen his stuff, you should check it out. Like he's great. And he, so he does this class online where he does ha teach you how to do likenesses. And um, man, it's awesome. I've been following that lately. It's really good. There's a bunch of people. Like who do I like to look at? Other people. Other people that I really like look at for sculpting. Um, yeah, I mean Stan Winston. Yeah, obviously he's and all that stuff's great. Um, um, I'm spacing on their names. Let me look real quick. Some of these people you may, guys may or may not have heard of. Let me see here real quick. Why am I spacing on names? Yeah, this guy Eris. Eris, he's a, I think his last name is Greek or something, but it's uh, Kalankontes. And he goes by, what does Eris go by on Instagram and these websites? That guy's amazing creature sculptor. His stuff's incredible. It's, uh, let me see here. Oh, he just goes by his name. Yeah. It's spelled A R I S for Eris and then Colon Contes, K O L O K O N T E S. Dude's a beast. So good. And then Jordu Shell, I always like his stuff. He's kind of a little more old school at this point, but really good reference, especially like bony landmarks and things. Um, really good. Simon Lee is an awesome sculptor, also. Um, obviously, most people know who like Rafa Garcetti is. He's a friend and he's really talented. This stuff's crazy. So fast. Then my buddies like Brian Wynia. I like his stuff. Cool does a creature design. And then I have a guy, a buddy I work with, Jim Van Bogart, who I feel is an awesome sculptor, but he never posts anything. It's really good. Yeah, Carlos is one of those like Carlos Fuente is. Um, it's hard not to like his stuff, right? I too really early on latched on to enjoying his work. And the cool thing now is like Instagram and, and whatnot is it's so easy to follow these people and to chat, chat to them. Like for example, Pascal Blanche. I remember when I first started getting into 3D, I thought his stuff was the coolest. And um, you can literally just straight up <laughs> chat to them on Instagram now. Used to, if I had a chance to chat to someone like that, I'd have been like terrified. Now it's just so easy. It's awesome. Let me bulk this area up. I too want to bulk this up. Because basically he's kind of in a little flex right here. So these two I feel like are going to bulk a little bit more because of it. They're compact a bit. Jordy was in Colorado recently. What's uh, distortions? Yeah, Jordy is awesome. I took a a mask making class from him, and he is a crazy dude. He's such a character. He's awesome. He was really entertaining. Learned a lot of good stuff in his class. Real nice guy. And he loves monsters and stuff. It's fun, like. Here and he'll talk about his stories and things. It's fun when you have people like that to listen to. It's amazing, like when you meet a lot of these people, you're like, oh, you're just you're just like another person, <laughs> just like me. They are, you know. That's the cool thing. Most of these most of these guys are just people who like making sculptures and are no no different really. It's nice when you find that out. Let 
they just been doing it for a while or whatever, you know? All right, let's get this rib cage sorted. So basically, we need to find our little belly button, which is go should land in between like the the love handles here, right? Let's not be lazy. Let me get just my anatomical reference in here real quick. Not be lazy about this. Just for myself. Da, da, da. Don't I have the front shot? Here we are. Oh, I have the one with the actual rib cage and stuff on, which is actually cool to see. You can get a feel for things, but you can see right here where the rib cage lands. You got the two upper abdomen, then we got the lower abdomen, and we got the belly button in between. So where I had mine there for a moment was a little off. Um, it's gonna be right around in here. Then we're going to get these, it's going to collapse, well not collapse, but these are going to be a little compact through here. So these will probably bulk out a little bit, obviously. I got to sort out this some. Oh, cool. Distortions makes the items for haunts, masks, and animatronic. Um, that's cool. I still feel we're trying to reach out over Instagram or other platforms if I don't know them personally. Sure, I get that. But at least like you can comment and interact with their posts, right? You can always start there. You don't need to hound people, but, you know, even just commenting on like, I love your work keep it up and engaging with people is easier than ever Wampa Stomps you're welcome glad you like the Gumroad tutorials haven't updated them in a while but glad they were helpful I actually really like making tutorials um, I just haven't made them in recent years. My last job was so demanding, I didn't have, I just didn't have the energy to make them, so I haven't really made them. But I actually really like making them, so maybe now that I've switched jobs, I should start making some again. Especially if people found them useful. Which ones did you do, um, just out of curiosity? Which ones did you go through? Oh man, this night crawler's getting cut. Let me do this. Oops. Yeah, I'm glad to be streaming on Twitch. It's fun. <laughs> Give me a chance to just um, make stuff and hang out. So it's a good time. I don't want to lose this image. Can't forget this one. Yeah, James, it's amazing that th this stuff is available now. Um, to your point, it's never too late to learn, but you're right. Like, it's amazing the access now to learning this stuff. 
if this was around when I started, I would have just been eating it up, you know? Just non-stop. You could find books or like DVDs or things in them or whatever maybe now and then or just books to read I guess but now it's like man all sorts of stuff it's really nice so the thing here with the trap or the lats I got to make sure they feel like they're going up under these muscles even these little back muscles Yeah, Wampa, I'm glad you think they stand the test of time a little bit. Um, the the newer ones, I newer as in the later ones I made, especially the one where I go over an entire character for games, I definitely tried to keep them more about the idea behind this stuff and not super specific to a specific technique, which I think is helpful. People need to learn anyways because the tools change so fast. Like texturing, look, when, like when I first started texturing, I, I made my first class and it was all Photoshop texturing. And now it's like, I don't even like use Photoshop hardly at all. It's crazy. All substance, right? But all the same um, ideas apply. So I think if people can learn why they're doing stuff and how to approach it, then... Um, it's a little easier. Or a little more timeless, I guess. Let me see. This abdomen goes there. That one goes there. Yes. Try to remember where some of these go. It's funny, I, I've done these so many times that even I, I need a good reminder. Yeah, I do think that's why Adobe bought Substance. I think you're right. They're, hopefully it'll continue to update nice. They definitely, I think, saw the game development market <laughs> going that way. I mean, like, literally, we our goal on our character team now is to not have to open Photoshop if possible, right? So like, um, not that that needs to be the goal, but the idea is like, we should be able to export out a substance um, with it ready to go into the game. And then, the, and the cool thing about ZBrush too is like, as, as good of a sculpting software it is, really like even the ideas around sculpting you just got to understand, regardless of ZBrush or not, too. That's what's fun about ZBrush is it's like a really pure sculpting package. It has a lot of cool tools and techniques you can do, but ultimately, you can just use it for sculpting. All right, now we need to get the love handles. And these connect back here. So I really need to get the... Uh, Or this hits. Let me see here real quick. So really, the lats kind of connect there a little bit. I always try to make sure my muscles feel like they're like wrapping around the figure and not just sculpted from like a sp one angle in particular. You know, like make sure this feels like it's pulling around back to this. Right? And like it's wrapping around the rib cage, not just like works from one angle. Oh yeah, the goblin guy. <coughs> Excuse me.
excuse me. Yeah, the orc. The ZBrush orc rendered in Keyshot. That one was fun. And all that stuff still pretty much applies. None of that's really changed. It's a little non-committal back here. Gotta say. I'm not gonna worry about it right now, though. Other than maybe we could get in... Uh, do a really low um, damn standard, and I can start to kind of push in the back muscles right here. Get a sense for... And then right here on the... These are pretty forward, so like... They're going to be the widest they normally are. Rotating around the ribs. There's ever a point where it pulls. What's up, Streetwise? How's it going, buddy? Sorry, looking at something here on Instagram. Notification. Thanks, Skulldrage. Um, trying to keep it fluid. The nice thing is if we get a good muscle structure under here, then doing his costume is going to be uh, pretty easy. Because basically, Nightcrawler is just a muscle dude. <laughs> That's kind of why I picked to do it, this guy. <laughs> you know. Muscle man. That's why everyone likes doing superheroes, right? The other thing I could always suggest for you guys if you want a tip is just try and think of planes. Like even what I did here is pretty stylized. It's like the straight and then plane back. But... Your muscles do do that in, in a bit. So, like, if we were to look at, um, just really be aware of the planes. So, like, for example, even here, this kind of, like, just rolls. It doesn't really have a clear plane. So, what I'm going to try and do is make sure there's a clear front plane here. So, either way, I could, I could lift up this side. I could use my H polish and just kind of hit that plane. And then you can soften the edges, but when you back up and you start to have some planes, you know, I can't enforce enough the planes. Like if you look at like master sculptors, like old sculptors uh, in marble, like Renaissance stuff, those things actually have a lot of clear planes. And then because it's marble and it's like translucent, it kind of softens it, but um, it reads really well because of that. So, like, it's like, this is a crazy-looking plane, but um, the reality is when you back away and you start to get rhythms in them, you know, it feels feels good. So, yesterday, I, for the first, so I hurt my back. I, I don't, honestly, I don't even want to say I hurt my back, but I, like, I don't know, honestly, what I did to it. I had crazy pain in it. I've always been pretty athletic all my life, and it was the first time I ever had a problem last year. So I kind of laid off certain exercises for a while. Sorry for this tangent, but I'm explaining my my neck right now is like super tight. And um, so anyways, I've been back in the gym pretty regularly the past few months. And I finally, for the first time, did uh, like heavier lifts, like on back squats, deadlifts, and like a push press. And boy, like, oh. I feel like a wimp. Hurts. I'm trying to have good posture here because it hurts so bad. Ouch. Ouch. I think his forearms might be... Or this upper arm might be too short. Or I can just leave big old forearms on him, I guess. So the main thing with your muscles, not to be all teachy right now, but my upper arm feels a little broken. 
And part of my problem I have that I need to sort is you can have your muscles like kind of stylized and stuff around, but you got to make sure your anatomy of your bone structure feels correct. So like the bone from here to um, where it goes into the arm. So for example, let me, I do follow the MLS. Let me grab some reference here real quick. Uh, I, I watch a lot of soccer. It's by far my favorite sport. And um, I should watch more MLS than I do. I, I like LAFC. Since they came to LA, it's been really fun since that started. I really like the their branding and the obviously their team right now is really good. Um, hold on, I'm trying to find the right ref. I'm trying to get a shot of the arm with the bone structure. I thought I had one. Let's see. Hmm. Well, this will kind of work. Anyways, you can see the bone inside here. Um, I wish I had where it connected up to the arm, but I got to make sure that like certain things like like there's a ridge on this humerus bone that all these muscles kind of connect on. And I got to make sure this stuff all lines up with that and is going into this correctly. That's the best thing you could do is make sure in your sculpture the bones are in the right spot because then you can always pull the muscle to it. Oh, I, you know, I haven't been playing team fight tactics yet streetwise. I need to though. I can play it at work, but I'm just waiting for it to come out in the right client, I think. I mean, the lead client, sorry. Oh, these anatomy Im images are from a book called... Um, let me look again real quick. I, I talked about this last time too. Human anatomy for the artists, for artists. Um, I have to look up specifically which one. There's a few that are called that. If you hit me up um, later, I can help look it up. Because last stream I got on Amazon and started to look and I realized there's a few that are called that. So... Um, I didn't find it at the time. And also Discord. I started Discord for any of you guys that want to join. Let me see if I can. Oh, I can actually put the link on. Shoot. I can do it. Let me see here. Restream. Do I have Restream on my phone? Because I, I can't figure out how to sign in on my computer. But anyways... What we can do on Discord is um, you guys can ask these types of questions to me later, and I can make sure to follow up and get them if any of you are on there. Otherwise, if you message me like on Instagram or something later and remind me, I can try and find find that. So, yeah, I can link in Discord. Oh, just remind me, and I can do it. No problem. Okay. All right, so I'm moving a little slow here. Let's see. So one nice thing we can get going here. Yeah, I actually really love these images because they, they provide just enough info for me. Like this, for example. Let's see, which one do I want? You know, even just like a simple image like this to kind of help me remind me of some simple things like 
how it compresses the obliques here and the, where the rib cage lands and the spacing between the rib cage and the, the hips. It's really nice. And then especially when they have these under drawings of like um, where this all lands. Like I, I know this stuff okay, but it's nice to have a nice reminder like this. nice all this stuff comes in knees on little tights the main thing here on the um, pelvis area down to the crotch is like you you get this compression right here on the belly button right right here on the obliques which in this case, our guy is leaned forward, so we should really feel um, this forward group. And then this one should probably actually come out more like its own part. And then it goes back. It should feel like it's going back. And obviously the crotch, but it should feel like it's flowing back overall. And then the legs obviously are going to attach up in here. He's hunched forward a bit. So our rib cage, it's stretching a little bit here now. Can make the obliques kind of stand out. Make sure our rib cage is good. And some of this, what we'll do is we'll, we'll just kind of move on and we'll come back to it. All right, forearms. What does it look like in the concept? They're big. I'm loosely basing it on these concepts, I guess, so. Oh, no. Move. Mm -hmm. My wife and I started to watch that Chernobyl show. We just watched the first episode. I don't know if you guys watched on HBO. I'm curious to see where that thing goes. It's going to be interesting. Everyone tells me that show's great. All right. All right, he has standard just forearms, which makes sense because he's a lanky dude. So for now, I'm just gonna set him up. These are really long right now. So did you watch the whole thing of Chernobyl? Because um, you know the f uh, so it's been hyped up a lot in my mind for me at this point. And I started the first episode and it seems really well done, but I'm like, what are they gonna do with this? I'm assuming it like really picks up. Would be my assumption. Yeah, the reality of it does make it a little scary, I guess. So I'm curious just where they take the drama of it, unless it's just about the people, I guess. Like the characters that were involved with it and what makes it interesting.
So your tricep's going to connect here. Classic tricep spot. And you get these things to pull off. All right, we're going to keep watching it probably. Everyone says it's good, so I haven't really met anyone that's like, oh, yeah, that Chernobyl show, that's no good. Oh, man, look how broken this looks right here. Let's see. Let's compare it to our legs. Oh, okay, it's dipping way in there. I like a bit of style in my curve, but this might be too much, even for me. Let me lengthen the upper arm a little bit too. I actually always like putting a lot of curve and natural curve into the bones, but you don't want to feel broken. Indeed, indeed. I feel like hands is going to be for another day. So we're already at 11.30. All right. One thing I liked when I learned pretty early on, like Schwarzenegger... Arnold Schwarzenegger would talk about the triceps and how you should be two-thirds tricep, one-third bicep. And I always think about that because oftentimes you'll actually see, like, if you have your arm out, well, if it's tilted forward, you'll see the top. If it's up, you'll definitely see the bottom. But you should always feel the triceps on some side of the bicep, depending on the angle. You don't want the bicep to be this huge thing, and you shouldn't feel the back of the arm. Typically, your, your, your tricep is much larger and um, volume than bicep. And you'll see it. In this case, I have pretty big top and bottom. So I might even be able to, in this case, I would say maybe pull it down on the top side a bit. Just a little. So it doesn't get too over the top. So we got to get the Discord going because next time I want to do critiques with you guys, I think it'd be really fun. have to take another stab at this face one of these nights also. All right, so you can kind of see here now, all right, getting the crotch correctly lined up. So one important thing we need to figure out to make this feel solid is where the serratus muscle hooks up, which is this muscle that basically um, cuts right through here on the legs. And is going to, let me get my ref, actually, on the inside here. Oops. Let me grab this one. So what we need to sort is this muscle over here. All right, so in our case, this right here, it connects to your pelvis, and it makes kind of, on the top of the skin, this nice straight curve line here, and then we get the big quad here, but then this connects down to the knee. 
This is important. It's a clear divider and plane on the legs. Oops, that was not mirrored, it looks like. So, saying that, though, here, let's hide. Um, Part of the arm here. Perspective. Where are you at? There we are. All right, let's turn off some of this arm real quick. All right. And also, what we can do is, for the time being, we could just not mirror one of these legs. All right, and we can just work on a single leg, especially with our reference like this. It'd be a little easier to sort this out. And then um, same for this side. So what we can sort out here is how this connects up um, to our, our bones. Which thankfully I'm already in a pretty good position because my pelvis is right here. And this muscle is going to come in right here. Right this, right there. So we're pretty good, actually. Um, I always have perspective on, almost always. Unless I need to do something specific, like I was just doing without it. Um, I always try to have perspective. It's good. And also I check in Maya quite often if it's for like uh, a game asset because ZBrush doesn't have true perspective. Let's do this. Let's um, save number one. And then I'm going to delete half the leg. I'm saving right now. I'm going to delete half the leg so we can work in Dynamesh mode. Um, like this. So let's delete hidden. All right, now we can do Dynamesh. All right, cool. So the things I'm going to care about here are is really where that that serratus muscle kicks in, which is right here. And then we're going to sort out, I think we're going to try at least, <laughs> to sort out the knee. I'm trying to decide. I don't think I want to merge this all in yet. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, 2019 got camera controls, but they don't have true perspective still. Better camera tools, though. I was actually pretty excited for it, thinking it did, and it once I looked more into it, it's still the old... Because the reality is ZBrush is a 2D application that is rendering. And that's why I can push so much geometry. Um, but... It's just what how it's architected. So I'm always going to need Maya or something else to truly get the feel for... The perspective. The nice thing about this image right here we're looking at is there's a clear plane right here, this straight, and then down. Right? It's not just a curve. How this is drawn is like plane, 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 kind of straight for the bone. Because you can kind of feel the bone in here, right here. <laughs> that Twitter sad face, that's pretty funny. Or Twitch sad face. I hope there aren't people on Facebook messaging me right now. Let me look. If you're on Facebook and want to chat, join Twitch or Google. Because I'm not getting the Facebook streams. Oh, yes, I think there is people chatting on there. Let's see. Only a little bit, not much. Because they, they added camera controls in ZBrush, which are uh, really nice. Don't get me wrong. But, um, yeah. So 
So this is a good view. You can see how these muscles connect in right here. And then we're going to have the bottom bottom hamstrings that connect back in there. And we can get an image for the side. But you don't want to lose... Uh, I can't do Dynamesh when stuff's hidden. You don't want to lose your planes, so... Let's see if we can sort. I really like this little space right there. I'm going to try and get. That connects right in there. What makes feel cool about this, it, it feels like this is where the muscles come together, right? It's like big old like quads coming in to the serratus right here. It's kind of a natural divider. Let's see if I have the images of the outside of the leg too right here. Let's move him down for a bit. Bring this up. I actually struggle with this part of the leg right here at the glutes. You have this great trochanter, this really outer part that you always hit or always you feel this bony landmark. So you got to make sure everything feels like it's flowing into there and then into uh, your leg muscles. So we'll have to sort this here in just a second. Because these glutes got to feel like they're correctly going into this. So what we can do at least is this muscle right here. going into our knee and again where the straightest pulls off which is this little area right here we're making that we're gonna get this right here it's pulling down to the knee and this is also where we're gonna get Let's see here. This is where the great trochanter thing is. And we'll probably get a lot of bulging of muscles together right here. And honestly, I can probably just pull this to the spot it needs to go in a way. I just got to figure out where the hamstrings connect in and all that kind of stuff to get really accurate on this. And if we block it out like this, this area, then we can merge it and it should be pretty easy to sculpt kind of the, the skin between it. But the thing is, is they should be coming into this bone here. How is everyone? I'm a little quiet tonight, a little more tired than usual. Any questions? No, oh, that's weird. Doesn't look good. Right. Ah. I'm 
going on summer vacation soon, which will be nice, up to Oregon. I'm very much looking forward to that. That is going to be awesome. We're going to try and... St my parents live up in Oregon, which is cool. And we're going to try and stop by uh, Crater Lake, which is a really cool place. Looking forward to a nice summer little vacation with my kids. Cool skull. Glad you're enjoying the anatomy. I like working on anatomy. But some of these subtle things can be little time consuming to get going. I have not seen Dark Phoenix. Did that come out already? Dark Phoenix? I totally... I mean, I've seen the trailers. Last Marvel movie I saw was um, Infinity... Not Infinity War. The last one. What's it called? What is it called? What was the last one called? I can't... It's totally spacing right now. But no, I did not see Dark Phoenix. Um, Liquid Snake, this is just for fun. And yeah, I do this for work. I, I don't do necessarily s this type of approach of statue, like maquette stuff. This, I'm kind of treating like a, like a, a maquette. Um, I do make characters for a living though, for work. Slightly different process than this. This is all posed up. But I do make characters, yes. An important thing to know about the knee here, okay, is the top plane. This little part is usually pretty flat. And you get... Okay, let me not mess this up here. The outside part of the knee hits higher. The inside comes a little bit lower. In this case, I'm thinking like pretty much up to this knee, right? And then you have the top of the quad, which connects, and then um, the ligament stretches through here. So you got a really clear bony straight, almost right here on the front. That's kind of what you're feeling right here on the drawing. End game, yes, thank you. That was the last one I saw was end game. What's up, Sammy? Welcome, if you just joined. We're just sculpting some Nightcrawler here still. Now we're going through all the anatomy, just sculpting away. Now we've got it posed up from last week. Do I have any tips for someone who wants to be a character artist and is trying to get into industry? Um, and then, Heron, are you saying, do I do environment art? I don't. If that's what you're asking. I do not do environment art. Unless I'm asked to help make a character statue. And in that case, I'm game. Otherwise, no. Um, I think the kneecap traditionally... Hold on, I'm going to answer a question about character getting into the industry in just a second. I think the kneecap actually, if I do this correct, actually rotates further... Oh, goodness, did I not separate? Oh, no, it's on like that. That's why. Okay. Um, I think it's actually rotated a little bit more like this. I don't have perfect kneecap anatomy knowledge. Let's see if I can sort this out, though. What I want is you want to fill this straight here with the tendon, then the front straight. Really important on the knee area to have your clear straights. And then clearly where the um, bones are. In this case, we have the upper and lower legs. All this is going to come together. Um, Tips for someone who wants to be in the industry as a character artist. I would say, I mean, it depends where you're at, I guess, at this point. Um, 
Oh, do environment art. Oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> I get it. I thought you were asking, do I? Um, yes, jokingly, there are a lot more environment art positions than character art positions, uh, just generally speaking. And they just seem to be more abundant in that sense. There's only oh so many character art positions, which does make it tough. It's true. Like if you actually look up the amount, there aren't a ton. Um, the only advice I could say is one, I, I don't know how far along you are in your journey with that, but um, you got to make sure, you know, having a hobby in character arts, one thing, doing it for a living is another. So I'd say look up courses, you know, that you can take to learn the whole pipeline, make sure it's something that interests you. Um, other than that, just do what you can to get cl in classes, honestly, and work on your portfolio. Like, you don't have to go to a big university anywhere to be a character artist. Um, really, when we look at portfolios, that's all we look at is the portfolio. I don't really care where you went, to be quite honest. If your portfolio is good, there's plenty of people who haven't gone anywhere. So, find what you have access to. If it's online, find some good online courses. Try and soak up as much as you can in those. Work on portfolio, portfolio. See if you can find internships in your area. You might be surprised what is out there. That's how I got most of my start and knowledge was on an internship. Um, it does wonders. The amount you can learn at uh, an internship versus school even, right? Even people who like took my class would say like, oh man, I learned so much more just in this one class than I did in school. And a lot of it had to do with it was really practical, hands-on work type stuff. So if you can find classes being taught for your character art, do them. And on top of that, it's just a lot of work. You know, you just got to work hard. There's people out there that work really hard. And they really want to work in the industry. And it can be pretty cutthroat in that sense. So really, if you want to do it, you got to work hard. And kind of be relentless and applying and the pursuit of it. And then eventually, over time, probably land something. But really look in the area and see what's available for education between online and then also what might be the nearest studio or something that you can even do. Even if it's not, like I, my first job was, or internship was at an animation studio was doing straight to DVD kids film things. It wasn't even games. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know if that helps. When will I combine them? I don't know. I'm a little scared to combine the upper and lower leg. I'll be honest. Because that means I'm committed to this pose. I should probably commit to it. I need to commit to it. But let's get this cab and stuff sorted first. Like this feels pretty good actually, this side right here. I feel pretty good about this. Um, I could kind of confidently move on. I actually don't want to combine it down the whole thing. I'm trying to think if there's a creative way for me to combine this. I can also maybe not combine it, but project certain aspects of the knee so it blends and keep them separate just for flexibility. That might work too. But I'm a little scared, I'll be honest. I should it be. I, like I've always say, it's like worst case is what I cut it out again and redo it. Just part of me wonders if I want to adjust them to be more upright or something. That's why I haven't. All right, let's hide these arms again. Yeah, you know, getting into games is is, is definitely tricky. Um, a lot of different routes to take. But ultimately, you got to work hard, and, like, it's not for everyone. 
even though we all love video games, love playing them, it doesn't mean you have to work in it. But the best thing you can do is just find ways to learn and get involved with the community. Oh man, what are we saying here? I've learned the whole pipeline and I've been waiting to get into the industry. I wouldn't mind doing environment art because I love 3D art in general and have been wanting to get into the industry for a long time. I'm nearing the end of my education journey in the sense that my course will finish soon. And I've been looking at job applications and internships, but I still feel like there aren't many places that are looking for junior artists. Um, yeah, it's tricky. Because it's like, Places want junior artists to help grow them, right? But they don't hire as often. They generally want experienced artists also. It, it really depends. Um, just be looking as much as you can. If you're in the LA area, try and just start getting your portfolio out there. So like, just kind of be active on Instagram. You know, it's like kind of weird thing to say, but like you can get on there and just be active, talk to people, ask people like, hey, do you mind critiquing my portfolio? Like I'm, I'm about to graduate, I'd love any feedback. Um, you know, just start asking people that kind of stuff. And, you know, some people might be like, might not respond, you know, for better or worse. Um, some people will. They'll give you feedback. Um, you know, just do your best to um, chat people up, get honest feedback about your portfolio. Let's see here. That's spam art station. I mean, it it really is. I'm looking at Sammy's stuff. And the other thing is, is make sure your guys' portfolios um, are uh, very character focused. So like if you want to work in characters, make sure it's clear. Like sometimes I'll look at people's portfolios and they'll have like a mix of stuff, of different things, right? So make sure you have that. And also if you want to work in games, make sure... Um, you have an actual, at least one game ready asset, you know, and the, the whole thing doesn't have to be. You don't have, to have like everything in your portfolio. Like if you have just like two or three pieces that are really solid game assets, like say one really good sculpt, um, one that's a one really good finished game asset that shows that you know the whole process. And then like some other forms of that, you know, complete in various stages as much as you can is better than things that are all over the place. Um, if that makes sense. Like, I don't need to see, like, weapons and props. That doesn't even matter to me. What I want to see is, like, character art, for a character art position, if that's what it, you're applying for. Um, try to avoid feeling like you got to show you, you know how to do everything. But some schools will, like, say that kind of thing to you. Like, that you have to be able to do, like, hey, show examples of environment art, Examples of like weapons, whatever it may be, nonsense. Um, if you want to be a character artist, the reality is um, we, you want to hire character artists. Man, why do I keep getting this? Auto masking is activated and therefore can't make you sculptures mode. Oh, it's because I have, I have topological on. It's a weird bug where if like I hold shift and topological was already on, it, it can't get back to the smooth section to turn off. So I have to turn off sculptures then turn off topological, and then turn it back on. Kind of funny. So then the reality is, is like, if you don't mind, right? If you're like, hey, maybe I'll put some pieces together for environment too, then make like a, make sure you apply in a way that like you send them that first, right? It's like, hey, I can do environment art. I want to apply for that. Again, a lot of people who get hired environment artists have a pretty focused portfolio even for that. Rarely is it a character artist that they go like, oh, he's going to do environments. If anything, that would probably feel insulting to some environment artist who'd be like, like, what do they think? They can just like do this because they're a character artist. 
So uh, all I'm saying is make sure your portfolio is focused and um, not all over the place. I'm going to use Inflate to kind of bring these forms together here. Get this little bone on the outside sometimes. What's up from Spain? Nice. Sun Sen Baron Doncom. I don't even know if I said that right. Honestly, we could also do a portfolio review night. I'd be down. All I'm saying is keep it focused. Now, if you're going to a small studio, let's say you're applying in a small studio that wants some versatility, sure, then prep your portfolio for that. You know, like be like, hey guys. I'm useful because I can do, I love characters, but um, I'm more than willing to help out here and I've experienced doing that. Like, let me show you X, Y, and Z, right? That is when that makes sense um, at smaller places. But at bigger studios, they hire very specific to it. All right, there's a little notch on the outside of your leg right here. You can feel that a lot of muscles pull from. It's like this one right here. Let me just click show you. Right here, there's a notch. Your bone. And all these muscles pull from there. And attach up like this ligament here. So like when I was getting into the industry, um, I literally had like three characters on my demo reel. Like one game character. At the time, it was like a high-res modeled character. Um, I did not have much, really. Comic Legend says, it would be a good idea to create a character with different material fabric care, maybe hard surface, and make the environment or base that fits that character so it's all in one. Um, I'm not a big fan of needing to do bases. Now, to your point, have a character that has different aspects, sure. Like, if you have something that shows fabric, um, hair, hard surface, then yeah, you can showcase your range in a character that way. I think that is good. Do you have to have the base? Not necessarily, I don't think. I don't think it's as important. Um, unless you really feel like it sells something about you I guess but I'd almost rather you spend that time on another character and just make the the one current one you have really nice as well um Mr. F Miss Mr. is it how do I say it Mysterification? is that how I'd say that have you done environment work before if so what made you choose character art instead um I never have done environment work aside from doing characters on God of War that were environment type things where I'd work with them, um, but no, I don't. I never have done environment work. I understand how a lot of it works, you know, just from beating games for so long, but um, it's not something I've like necessarily wanted to do. If that makes sense, I am more than happy to let environment artists do that. Be my guest. But yeah, there definitely, I mean, there definitely are more jobs in environment. It's true. Like, like for example, on God of War, there was like um, six character artists, I want to say. And man, there's easily double the environment artists, you know, just on that game. And that's just that game. Some games' environments are huge, even bigger. Use some inflate. Do I miss Sony? Um, 
I miss, I, I really, I did really like working for Sony in the sense that I was a big fan. I'm a big fan of Sony. I, I love Sony. I love PlayStation, you know. I love a lot of the products, but I mean, it, for me, it was time to do something else. So in that sense, no. But I love a lot of the people there. I love the product. I also, I honestly, I really was proud to work for them. No doubt. I really enjoyed that aspect. So I missed some of that for sure. It was good. Do I know N Nimlo? I don't think so. Should I? Hopefully I'm not. I don't. <laughs> hopefully I... I don't know that, or hopefully I don't know that person. I'm saying I do. Sorry, I don't know what I'm trying to say right now. Doesn't make any sense. Um, do you need 3D and 2D? Um, I don't think you have to have 2D. If you guys don't know, like for example, Raf Grissetti doesn't do any 2D at all. He'll tell you he does not, he sucks at drawing and does not like to do it. <laughs> um, so really, as a character artist or whatever, no, you don't have to have that. Does it help? Sure, if you're good at it, but I'm not hiring you for that. It shows like you can see. A lot of times when I look in a portfolio, it's like, does this person, can they kind of see what they're doing? And if you're drawn showcase abilities to understand form and anatomy, then yeah, I mean, that's always nice. It shows like you learning, you could kind of show that kind of stuff, like your drive to learn. So that stuff's always good. Yeah, doing environment stuff in uh, our materials in Substance is for sure fun. Indeed. Wow, it's already 12.05. Goodness. Goodness. Let's mirror this leg over. I don't think I'm getting as far tonight as I would have liked. Let's do this. Mirror. Oh, and the new ZBrush has the proper mirror also. That's right. Oh, shoot. Cancel. Let me save first. It was giving me a good old warning. Yeah, Raph is uh, scary good indeed. He's very good. I remember when I was working with him, and um, this dude is fast. It's crazy. Crazy. And even to this day, I'm always like, dude, you like just banging out stuff. Crazy, man. All right, let's see if this mirror is fine. Oh, that mirror totally okay. Why was it giving me a warning? Oh, shoot. I'm here at the tail. That's funny. Hmm. Let's split this. Split, split, split. <clears throat> no, Raph doesn't draw at all. Does not at all. Now, it doesn't mean they all do that. My point being is that, like, like a lot of those current guys at Sony, I mean, some, I think, are more into drawing and painting than others. But he's a funny one. Because he doesn't. And, and I've talked to him about it, and he, he just prefers to do it in 3D. Oh, I also have the head attached. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I don't want to mirror my head also. Okay, let's split hidden. Look at me. I'm like, I was almost mirroring away too much stuff. Almost made a messy scene. I personally have been trying to get 
over I've always enjoyed 2D. I remember when I first did figure drawing and stuff early on, I really liked it. So I've always kind of aspired to. Um, I haven't drawn as much as I would have liked. But over the past few years, I've been doing a lot more 2D. And trying to get more involved with concept and stuff at work now, too. I just want to be better at that, personally. Do I know how long Raph worked on Kratos for God of War? Um, uh, that's going to be a hard number to say because you, someone like Kratos, um, you kind of work on throughout a lot of the project. It's it, it's definitely the most nitpicked thing. Like I know in God of War 3 and stuff, like Kratos was worked on a lot over the entire project. So it's harder than some of the characters to put a number on. It's really hard to say. We'd have to ask him, see if he knows. Even that, he probably doesn't know. Because a lot goes into design time and and making like all the blend shapes and stuff. For, I mean, there's like an insane amount of blend shapes for Kratos. A lot of people work on him in that sense. Yeah, comics legend, glad to share. If you have any specific questions about art process, let me know. I'm just making this dude, and I feel like I'm making him slow for you guys. All right, at some point, I need to merge these legs, don't I? <sighs> hmm. Let's start by merging this kneecap. I'm safe. I feel comfortable doing that. Let's do this. I'm going to drop the kneecap. Oh, come on. Why is it doing this? All right, there we go. Let's merge. Let's do this. Polygroup. Group visible. For the sake of. This is true too. So there is a way to do this and make it feel like they're merged. I don't know if you guys know this, but like you can actually just sculpt between meshes. Now, the trick is you can't smooth it. The second I smooth some of this, I don't know why I didn't just think of this. All right. So you can actually sculpt across these with some of these brushes. All right, so I think one of my problems I have here is I'm not giving enough space real estate to this knee. I'll see when I go to smooth. Look what it does. Yeah, I need to merge this. For the sake of... Uh, I don't do a lot of animal sculpting. Probably more animal drawing, if anything, actually, now that you say that. Not a lot of animal sculpting, per se. I should do some, though. Trying to get this nice curve in this upper lower leg. This calf's gonna come out more up here. Longer curve out here on the outside.
Mr. Fication's asking, how deep into texturing do you think it's necessary to know? Obviously, you'd want to know both really well, but would you say focusing on showcasing your sculpting techniques is better at texturing and creating details with maps? So, um, this probably comes down to the style you're kind of shooting to hit. If it's a more stylized kind of uh, game, then your sculpting and your form and stuff's definitely going to be the paramount, most important thing, right? Because all your textures are going to be driven based on the sculpt and the form. If you're doing something that's supposed to be like, say like the new God of War, right? That has a lot of realistic texturing to it on its materials and like the scratches and things to the part, then you, you're going to need to showcase that kind of stuff too for a character art role. Um, otherwise, it'll just feel shallow, your portfolio. And that's where I'd say take a one full character, you know, to completion in that sense, at least. That way, um, it shows those types of skill sets. Oh, here's one little detail to note on the reference. You can see kind of like where this bone is, and then it kind of kicks back right there. So it goes back and then it kind of goes up. But yeah, you need to show texturing in some form. Like I said, if your in style is stylized, then your texture is going to be a lot a lot driven from the the sculpt itself. Your your fundamentally your sculpture on all forms needs to be really good regardless of style. Cuz even the realistic stuff, your underlying form is also very important. It's just that on top of that, you also need to have high fidelity texturing. If that makes sense. What's up? Pupak. Pupak. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Where are you checking in from? I'm in Los Angeles. On this fine Tuesday, well now Wednesday morning. I'm probably going to go another 30 minutes, guys. Try not to kill myself like I have the last few streams. Oh man, I stay up so late the last couple streams and boy do I pay. <laughs> Even though I'm having fun. I end up staying up way too late. And every stream I've said this same thing. Man, this doesn't feel that good right now. This needs to feel like the bone. So we're going to flatten this side of the shin down. Because your shins are actually really flat. On the, There's a clear plane right here. I see some people just like straight up do their standard brush like this and then smooth it and it works pretty good. It goes over to the ankle. And then what we need to do then work it out here. This calf muscle here. Belarus, that's awesome. Never been there, but would be cool to visit. Uh, my wife doesn't get mad. It's just I pay for it in the sense that my kids still get up early, and sometimes 
wake up in the middle of the night and then I'm at oh, this is where I messed up on this inside leg actually now that I'm looking at this um, the serratus comes and wraps in over the leg right here and I am not accounting for that right now in this at all I either need to lift all this up. Yeah. Like that. So that's how I pay for it, is my kids. Spreads out right here. Mystification is saying, would you say there's a better chance in breaking into the industry to be in the USA like in LA than other places of the world? I know there are game companies everywhere, but I wanted to see what your stance is. Um, hmm. I mean, obviously being here helps with um, probably networking, you go to events, take classes, meet people. Does it help you get a job? Local jobs possibly. So like the last studio I was at was a smaller studio and definitely if you're a local, it was much simpler for small studio because of moving costs, all sorts of stuff that are related to to running a business like that. So in that sense, yes, totally. Um, especially there's sometimes small th things that are just happening that need people quick. And if you're available to take a job soon, then it's a lot easier for you to get those jobs, right? So you, you probably just naturally have more access to stuff like that. Is it preventing you from getting a job? Totally, no. Um, especially studios that are looking to take their time and hire the right people and get a good team. They'll bring people in from wherever if they need to. The only tricky thing if you're outside the U.S. then is um, you have to get green cards and visas for working, which can mean you have to prove yourself a lot more to be hired somewhere because that's its own, that's its own beast of a, a process. All right, guys, I think I'm going to merge. Uh, I like how clean... I'm trying to... I wonder how people handle this that do this type of sculpting. My problem is I'm running into here is it's getting hard to deal with this. Let me show it, lower my... Yeah, I'm just fighting this mesh right now. I don't think I'm going to try and keep doing that. I want to think about how I want to deal with this. I don't think I'm going to change it tonight. But. Oh, now look at this. So this also, I'm looking at, what I'm looking at right now is this calf right here. No, I know I can dyna mesh it together. I, I don't want to is my problem. Not yet. And it might be me just avoiding the inevitable. Because I like having 
the ability to just adjust. I just need to commit to this pose is what I need to do. I think it's my hesitancy. And also, it's going to be easier to work on this feet area with it separate for a bit also. So I think I need, just need to do a pass on everything. And then um, I can dynamesh it all together. In this case, however, I probably could dynamesh this lower leg and these feet together for sure. It's definitely the way to go. Oh. All right, we can make this guy look like um, Nightcrawler pretty quick here. All right, let's load in our other initial reference. I like the, some of the old school design aspects of these. I still need to do the um, but I kind of feel like having some fun here. All right, this is going to be down the forms. Where are the specs on my PC? Let me look. Um, about. All right, it is. I have an Intel i7, 2.6 gigahertz, 32 gigs of RAM. And my graphics card is. So for Zebra specifically, your memory, your RAM, like I have 32 gigs with the Intel i7 is um, important. And then my NVIDIA card is, uh, how do I get there? Display, let me see. Um, and where's my NVIDIA? I Normally I, I thought you could type in NVIDIA control panel, but that's not showing up. Let's see. I forget which... Uh, hold on. Control panel. Here we go. It's loading in. Let's see. What do I have? Where does it say in here? Oh, system info. Here we go. Oh, this one. This card is a Quadro, actually. That's right. This laptop. This is my work laptop. It's a Quadro P3200, uh, which is pretty powerful, actually. But the um, the thing that matters for Zebra the most is your processor and your memory. So. That's really what you need to worry about. <laughs> yeah, I know Quadro card is it is it is kind of crazy. Like I said, this is my work laptop. So it's a little beefier than your average one. All right, let's extract this. 
And I'm kind of doing this for fun right now. I don't think I'll keep this, but this will actually be good to see um, what's working, what's not, that kind of stuff. So let's do this. No, it's a little thick. A little thicker. All right, let's accept this. Do I have a Twitch channel? No, I don't. I only really stream on here when I do the Pixelogic ones. Um, if you're on Discord, I'm trying to set up my Discord channel there so we can chat on there for like when streams are coming up and that sort of thing. All right, let me let's see remesh this real fast. Let's see how it handles it. What the? Why did it just rotate it? What in the world? Bizarre. Is my arm not mirrored? Hmm. Alright, whatever. Let's keep moving. I don't have to zero mesh it right now anyways. Oh, uh, you know what I should have done? All right, let's try this again. Let's dynamesh this whole thing. Or extract this whole thing, I mean. Okay, cool. Extract, accept. Now what we'll do is we're going to do it again now on this. All right, now we'll extract on top of this one. All right. All right, and we'll just extract this. Oh my goodness, I don't think, I think I, I, I think my arms are supposed to be mirrored and they aren't. Shoot, I need to fix that, I guess. I guess I've gotten a little messy at some point here. Look at that, it's like, I don't think it's actually mirrored anymore. Well. Let's see which side. Let's see which way it mirrors to you, real quick. Let's see here. There we go. Mirror and weld. Yeah, I rotated it at some point. Look at that. Wait, which one did I want? That was the question. I have no idea. All right. You're right, it's gotta keep moving.
All right, cool. Now we're back. Let's see here. I often get lost at where some of this stuff is. It's crazy. I've used it so many different times. Actually, I want to invert. I think I'm going to go this way. I think I have the red on top. That's too thick. Oh my goodness. Let's just accept it. All right. All right, here we go. <laughs> you just put a few colors on these things and you're like, there they are. had perspective on this whole time. All right, oops. All right. Just making my way around this thing. Ah, oh, shoot. I just went back on the undo curve on it, undo ch line on accident. Forward. All right, there we go. I don't know if you guys ever hit that on accident, too. Almost there. Right here, we're going to have it come out. Extract this. And we can pull this out. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's 
It's got to sort out some of these curves, I guess. That It's actually thicker now that I've put these colors on than I would have thought. Oh shoot, look at this. Got that little bit there I need to get rid of. Once you put color on these sometimes they um they can do that. Keep accidentally hitting that up there. So I'm going to do clip curve here from the front. All right, there we go. Also, we don't need this right here. But I can sort that later. But yeah, it's actually th thicker in the torso than I would have thought. And his head can be blue. Ah, uh, this also got a little messier than I would have liked. I wonder if I can clip curve this too. Hmm. I think the best way to clean this one up is other than I mean I guess I could just redo this section. other than trying to clean it up this way. Even this kind of works. What's up, Watson? Welcome. Just roughing in, I was just roughing in the um, costume real quick for Nightcrawler, just to get a sense for it and how it's all feeling. I think I should probably re extract this. And make sure it's cleaner next time I do it. Or I guess I could do what I'm doing also here. Which is kind of just massage it in the, the correct place. All right, tail is blue. Legs are black. We can also do it with these matte caps, but we gotta adjust the material. a little brighter. I think it's also on. The old wax. 
Flux modifier, that's right. Trying to find the thing that makes the ambient a bit brighter on the material. Is this it? Intensity A and B? No. Let's go back and sculpt some of this stuff in. yellow eyes. Then needs his white boots. Keep them simple right now. And mainly right now I'm just doing this to get a feel for the rest of it in terms of like um, things to adjust at this point, you know. Let me see here. And it's another reason to keep these separate. Like when I was trying to decide if I wanted to merge all this stuff, things like this are still easier at this point to manage with all my parts. If I merge this lower leg to the upper one. Oh great, I was not mirroring any of that. That's okay, I guess. What's up? Welcome, welcome, Fanatos21. You're coming late into the stream. It is morning for you, I take it. Late for me. Welcome to it. Just doing a block in of some of these parts. see let's make this white all right I could do this part. I'll try that again. Man, I cannot draw a, 
this correctly if I wanted. Let's accept this for the sake of this. All right, cool. So now looking at this, after getting everything in here, he's just kind of bulky in the wrong spots. Like for example, I, I think the waist is going to need to be um, more lean like this, which is fine, not a big deal. I almost need to give more, I almost feel like, oh, actually it's not too bad, I guess. I gotta store out some style stuff on some of this to make it feel, if I want it to feel more like the illustration there. That's going to have to wait for next time as I do more of this. How much time did it take t this type of project? Um, so I've done this over the last couple streams. So I'm probably at like eight, nine hours on this thing, something like that. I've done it over the course of like three hours, three, three hour streams, something like that. So basically the first stream we started with um, blocking in his head. That's what I did on the first one. I haven't touched it since, so I need to go back on this also. Then last stream we blocked in the pose, roughed it in. So like, um, let me see if I can, let's see if we can actually rewind the whole I don't know if we can rewind the whole thing. But anyways, we started roughing the pose, and then tonight I started sculpting the actual body. So like the like I merged in my block in and started sculpting the anatomy on these things. A little slow, just chatting and sculpting. So working out a lot of uh, this stuff. And I still need to really finalize it all. And I need to finalize the feet and the hands and then really tighten up the a pass on the anatomy. Uh, and then make this weapon. We're, we're not honestly too far off from just finishing this. But a lot of times the details in the end are what can take uh, time. But we'll have our, our night crawler rolling before you know it. Let's see here. Look at the lighting. Let's see here. But yeah, I'm probably going to call it a night on this. It's, it's late for me. I'm getting tired, as you guys can probably tell. I'm not talking as much. Um. What we need to do next time is lock in basically all the anatomy. So that what that's going to mean is, um, I don't know if I'll have to merge in these upper legs to the lower body, but we'll probably merge in these these to the 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 body, and then probably merge these lower legs into the upper ones. I might be able to get away with it. I'm going to do a little research on how to keep these separate. I might be able to sculpt them separately and just merge in the kneecaps to the quads because I do like the flexibility, especially when making these parts like I was just doing, to be able to just show this area. 
and uh, still handle this. So we'll need to sculpt the hands and the feet. Probably could sculpt hands and feet next time, as well as start to tighten up, really tighten up some of this anatomy. Basically start going in and really picking and choosing where we want to emphasize like muscles and certain features of Nightcrawler. And we can do that, and then after that it'll be making this little outfit, which honestly is probably going to be one of the easier parts of it all, once our anatomy is all in place. We'll be there. But yeah, I think I'm going to be calling it a night tonight, fellas. Not as late as I normally go, or not normally, I should say, but I have gone. Try not to stay up as late tonight. Be somewhat responsible. And my energy is just waning. Um, any last questions before I head out tonight? Otherwise, oh, Discord. Let me see if I can sign into Discord real quick. So that if you guys have questions, or when we actually start to plan the next stream on this, like I was saying, like doing some critique sessions or other things on the stream, I think would be fun. Um, going over maybe, I don't know, we can talk on there even uh, project types and things like that on the Discord that you guys would like to see on the stream or topics to go over. Let me try and sign into my Discord thing right now, real quick. It keeps asking me if I'm a robot and I say no. Let's see here. Oh uh, yes, and they're asking about anatomy books on Discord already. So a few of us are on Discord. So more should join if you guys want. Oh my goodness, it keeps asking me, please select all the squares with vehicles in it. I don't even know if I typed in my password right. These things. Traffic lights. Oh my goodness. And then it tells me my password drunk. Ugh. I'm trying to remember when I made this password. What is it? Hmm. Sorry, one second, peeps. Man, I keep saying. Oh, it's telling me to check my email. One second. I want to get you guys the link for this. Verify login. You fill this link after time. Okay. Ah, there we go. I'm in. All right, I can show you guys the link now. Let's do it. Invite link. All right, so if any of you want to join the channel, go to that one. And... Um, Actually, if one of you could make sh let me know really quick that it even worked for you that are on Discord, then uh, actually did that link even go out just now? I just tried to send. Can anyone verify if that went out? Because I just sent it and it does not look like it went out for whatever reason. Let me try that again. I'm posting it on here. Weird. I send it. It might be a thing that doesn't let me post links. Hmm. Let's see. Is it going on the channels at all? Let's see here. I'm going to go look on Twitch real quick. It's not going out. Let's try again. I think it's blocking links. How else can I send this to you all? Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm going to try and just paste it myself. I can't. I'm not logged into Twitch. What is the easiest way for this? How did I get it to y'all before? Notepad file on screen with link. Yeah, I mean, I can I can type it in here pretty easy for you. Let me do it real quick. One sec. I guess it's really not that hard to do. One second. Let's do... Discord. There you go. Can you see that? Can you guys see the Discord link on there? Ah, there you go. Thank you. I I don't know why it wasn't pasted for me. Yeah, I think so. I think that's right. Yeah, try it real quick. I don't know why it's not letting me post. I'm using this Restream app. So for any of you that aren't on Twitch right now, um, you won't see that link, I don't think, unless on the stream. Otherwise, you can just copy what I have up there. Yeah, if Watson, you just use 3D Max and don't use ZBrush yet. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, ZBrush is definitely very cool. All right, fellas, I think I'm calling it a night tonight. I've lost my energy as I've dropped off the last half hour. Um, please get on Discord if you want to chat at all before the next stream. Like I said, um, I can take suggestions before the next one, as well as we can prep things like critiques or whatever, which I think I keep saying would be fun. So join me on there. Otherwise, have a good night. Thanks for everyone who was hanging out. I appreciate it. And um, feel free, yeah, hit me up. You should be able to see my link there below, Art of Caton on Instagram, my website. If you need something, you can find me online. Just for, search for Caton Calloway, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, wherever. Anyways, thanks for hanging out tonight, everyone, and I'll see you next time. I usually stream every other week on Tuesdays. Saying that, though, let me think. Um, this is Tuesday, and then the next Tuesday, and then I think I'm out the following. Unless I bring my stuff with me in Oregon, which maybe I will. I don't know. I can't probably hold myself to that. Hold myself to that. So I might have to adjust the schedule a little bit. Um, but anyways, have a good night, peeps. Stay cool yourself, and I'll catch you all later. Have a good night. See you on Discord.